السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To carry on with the special embryology lectures and development of the foregone I'm gonna discuss in this presentation the development of the liver and the biliary system I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and the head of anatomy department at Mansoura University, Egypt Start with the development of the liver. In this sagittal section of an embryo, you can see that at the region of the lower part of the foregut, there is an outgrowth. It is called the liver bud. As we can see in this picture, this is the endodermal lining of the foregut. At this region, uh, the endodermal lining outgrow and form the liver bud. This liver bud will grow into the septum transversum, which is a plate of mesoderm that lies between the heart and the yolk sac. And the septum transversum, if uh, you remember, it will give the central tendon or central part of the diaphragm and also shares the information of certain structures inside the liver. The liver bud divides into two parts. Hepatic part, cranium, and cystic part, caudal. If we enlarge it, actually it looks like a proclivia. The larger cranial part here represents the hepatic part of the liver bud, while the smaller caudal part represents the cystic part of the liver bud. The stem of the hepatic part will form the hepatic duct, while the stem of the cystic part will form the cystic duct together they will form the common bile duct the cranial part or the pars hepatica or hepatic part gradually thickens to form the hepatic cords the intrahepatic part of the pilary system so remember these structures are endodermal in origin While the caudal part of the pars hepatica remains narrow, becomes canalized, and then will form the right and left hepatic ducts and the common hepatic duct. Inside the liver, we have hepatic sinusoids. They are formed by intermingling of the growing hepatocytes with the vitelline and umbilical veins. So in this diagram, we can see the uh, liver bud. This is the sinus venosus, which empties into the heart and receives veins from the fetus, like the vitelline veins and the umbilical veins. So when the liver bud grows, the hepatocytes invade the vitelline and umbilical veins and break them down into hepatic sinusoids. As we can see here, this is the growing course of the hepatocytes. They invade the vitelline and the umbilical veins. And finally, they form the sinusoids that lie between the hepatic cords. If you remember, I said that the liver bud invades inside the septum transversum, which is mesodermal in origin, which also shares in some of the components of the liver. So the mesodermal cells of the septum transversum will uh, give us the liver capsule and the connective tissue content of the liver. It will also give us the phagocytic uh, cells inside the liver, which are called copper cells and also the blood forming cells or the hemopoietic cells also at the mesoderm of the septum transversum between uh, the liver and the anterior abdominal wall will form the falciform ligament 
while the mesoderm of the septum transversum between the liver and the stomach will form the lesser omens. The part of the mesoderm of the septum transversum on the surface of the liver will form the visceral part of the peritoneum. It will cover it completely except at this area where the liver comes into contact with the diaphragm, we call it the pear area of the liver. So in summary again, the cranial part of pars hepatica will form the hepatocytes, pile canaliculi and pile ducts. The caudal part of pars hepatica will form the right and left common hepatic ducts. The vitellina and the umbilical veins invaded by the liver tissue will form the hepatic sinusoids. The mesenchymal cells of septum transversum will form the coffer cells and the hemopoietic cells. The mesoderm of the septum transversum will form the falciform ligament, the lesser omentum, and the visceral peritoneum. Uh, for the development of the gold bladder, let's revise this picture again. Its larger cranial part will form the pars hepatica or the hepatic part, while its smaller uh, caudal part will form the pars cystica or cystic part. So the gold bladder develops from the pars cystica, which lies caudal to the pars hepatica. It grows into the ventral mesentery, so its epithelial lining is derived from the endoderm of the foregut, while its muscular coat and the peritoneum are derived from the mesoderm of the ventral mesentery. For the extrahepatic pillary tract development, the stem of pars hepatica will form the common hepatic duct. The stem of pars cystica will form the cystic duct. The stem of the liver body cell will form the common pile duct. As we already know, like any development of a duct or a tube inside the, the GIT, initially the endodermal cell lining of the belly tract proliferate to form a solid cord, then a recanalization uh, appears later. Thus, if there is improper recanalization, anomalies appear. Anomalies regarding uh, the gallbladder formation, either there is a genesis of the gallbladder or absent gallbladder, or the opposite, it is duplicated, or pivot or abnormality in its position so it is on the left side not on the right side or embedded within the liver tissue or sometimes floating there is a piece of mesentery holding it to the undersurface of the liver so let's try to look at them so here in these pictures we have double gallbladder each one has its own cystic duct, either they remain separate like here or they unite and form a single cystic duct. Here we can see a perfect gold bladder. They unite at their neck and has only one cystic duct. In this picture, the gold bladder lies on the left side or embedded within the liver tissue or floating with a piece of dentary below the liver. The other type of anomalies regarding the extrahepatic pillary system, either we have complete failure of recanalization, which we call it atresia, or anomalies in the formation of the cystic duct, or there is an accessory hepatic duct. So in this picture, here we have atresia in the uh, common bile duct only. Here we have it uh, in the common hepatic ducts and common bile duct. 
and also in the gold bladder. Here the atresia lies only in the common hepatic ducts. Here the atresia lies in the common uh, hepatic ducts in the, in the gold bladder and in the cystic duct and also in the common bile duct. Also, we can have abnormalities regarding the union of the cystic duct and the common hepatic duct, as here we have low union, or here we have high union. Here there is adherence between the common hepatic duct and cystic duct. In this picture, uh, the cystic duct is absent or very short. Here the cystic uh, duct takes an anterior spiral course. To join the common hepatic duct. This spiral course could be reversed and there is here a posterior spiral course of the cystic duct in order to join the common hepatic duct from its left side. All of these anomalies should be taken into consideration during cholecystectomy or surgical removal of the gold blood. Also, there are group of anomalies related to the presence of extra hepatic duct. So here we can see the extra hepatic duct joining uh, the common hepatic duct. In this picture, extra hepatic duct joined the cystic duct. While here, the extra hepatic duct joined the common pile duct. Sometimes it just to join the gold bladder itself. Here we have two accessory hepatic ducts. This is the end of my presentation. I hope you like it. If you do, please leave a comment and do not forget to subscribe, like, and share.